everybody my name is Krista and this is my first video today I'm going to be showing you how to refinish an old hope chest and then turn it into an outdoor planter so that it can be used as either a flower or a vegetable garden so I will be showing you how to prep the hope chest uh, with some waterproofing so that it can be kept outdoors and my plan was to do an antique uh, weathered look on this hope chest. So I'll be showing you two painting techniques today. One is a uh, crackle paint finish technique um, and also another technique that uses a plastic uh, shopping bag with paint. And the other thing that you'll be getting today is some budget friendly money saving tips. So let's get started. I have already removed the hardware and as you can see um, this is all scratched up um, it was used and I got it at a local yard sale I believe I paid $20 for it the great thing about these old hope chests is that they're very heavy duty so they should be able to withstand uh, the four seasons of weather and be able to be kept outdoors once I'm done painting it and refinishing it. This is the inside of the hope chest. Um, a friend of mine was just nice enough to drill these holes. Uh, this will allow all of the soil to drain. Um, he put a lot of holes in there in their half inch size. So I decided to paint the hope chest um, this gray color. It's a uh, rustoleum gloss winter gray and um, after I had done the first coat I kind of had an antique look to it and I thought I was gonna like it but then once um, it dried I wasn't too thrilled with it so I decided to do a second coat this is the second coat um, it, when the Sun hits it it um, seems to have some light blue and light green undertones to it so I decided I wanted to waterproof the hope chest because it will be outside um, all, all year round. And uh, after doing a little bit of research, I decided to go with this product. I have never used it before. Um, what I ended up doing was I sprayed the underside of this, including the legs. And um, I've used a lot of different spray paints before and I found that this spray paint stinks to high heaven. So. Obviously, you want to spray outside, and I would highly suggest um, to put on a respirator. So, I'm going to be putting the waterproof spray inside of the hope chest. And to prep it, I am going to use a medium grit sandpaper. Uh, when you sand, you should always sand with the grain. And I'm noticing that on here, the grain is going in different directions. So. I will be sanding this. Um, I also did sand the outside with the medium grit before I painted it as well. So I've decided that I'm going to spray paint the hardware and I've decided to go with this Rust-Oleum Metallic Oil Rubbed Bronze. I have used this product before in this color before and when it dries it just in my opinion looks gorgeous so here is the hardware and i have put two coats of this uh, spray paint on it uh, typically when you have old hardware you are probably going to want to take a low grid sandpaper and very lightly sand it um, you're going to want to be very careful because uh, sometimes the hardware can scratch very easily but Putting this, doing the sandpaper will allow the paint to adhere better um, on a smooth surface. Where these were so worn out, um, I didn't uh, do that. I just sprayed directly on it on the first and second coat. So one of the things I've noticed um, as it's dried is that it's bubbling and um, has some imperfections going on. And typically when this happens, I would typically re-sand it and re-spray it again. But where I am looking to do a weathered look on the hope chest, 
I'm thinking I might keep it as is, but I think what I'm going to do is I am going to do a third coat on here and then make my decision on um, if I'm going to re-sand it and repaint it or if just keep it as is. So this is uh, my dog Benson. Uh, he was adopted from a shelter and uh, he's actually a purebred Shih Tzu. And uh, he's just a fantastic dog. When I got him, he was about two. And um, he is a love bug, very friendly, very sweet, and just, uh, I cannot stress enough how great it is to adopt a pet from a shelter and uh, give a homeless pet a home. As an added protection, I decided to use this clear plastic sheeting uh, just because this is going to be outside all year round. Um, they actually call this plastic sheeting and it comes in these large rolls. When I cut the sheeting, I actually had a lot of extra overhang um, just so I could make sure that I was going to have enough to cover the entire inside of the hope chest. What I did was um, staple um, the sheets on the bottom. I wanted to make sure it was completely flat. Note to self, make sure your staple gun actually has staples in it. So when I started stapling, I actually started um, in the center. I stapled and then I slowly pushed the plastic out um, in each direction and started stapling as I go. And then went into the corners and up the sides. What I did on this side was I actually folded the plastic over because I didn't want any cuts in it that water could seep into. I kind of uh, folded it almost like a present. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I also took the uh, excess plastic and I folded it a few times over and then stapled it against the wall. Um, again, just to um, prevent any moisture from going in and under it. And uh, once I'm done that, I am going to take a little uh, knife and uh, make a little X where every hole is so that uh, the water can go through. Once I get my fruit and vegetable plants planted, say that five times fast, I wanted to keep the lid on this hope chest open, but the um, hinge that typically would have a safety mechanism to prevent the lid from falling on people's hands. This one does not have that safety mechanism on it. So I was trying to figure out a way of uh, stopping the hinge in case there was a lot of wind or something like that. My friend who had uh, drilled these holes for me um, actually came up with a great idea that I am going to use. And that was to put a um, a screw here so that it will prevent this from moving forward. It'll only go so far. I moved the hope chest to the place that's going to be going forward because I figured once I added the potting soil it was going to be really heavy and hard to move. The ground was really uneven and I wanted to make it level so that the water would drain evenly. So what I ended up doing was um, I took my level and I also added some extra potting soil that I had on each side under the uh, legs. When I checked it for level, um, I checked it this way, and then I also checked it um, on the side here um, in each area, and then just adjusted it and uh, moved it and maneuvered it as much as I could to get it as even as I could. In my effort to save money, because I figured if I filled the entire Hope Chest with potting soil, it would get pretty expensive. So I decided to take some empty plastic bottles that I cleaned out and uh, fill the Hope Chest with that. I think I filled it about three quarters of the way up. And I did make sure that the plastic bottles all had a screw on cap because I figured, um, you know, if they had a different kind of cap, that um, might pop off and water got inside, it might start to smell over time. So I covered the bottles with a sheet of landscape fabric. This will allow the water to drain from the soil. And I also stapled the fabric all along the inside walls of the Hope chest just to keep it in place. So 
So I woke up this morning and decided I wanted to give this hope chest more of an antique weathered look. And I've decided I'm going to paint it white over the gray and do a crackle antique finish to it. Because I've already lined the inside of this hope chest with the plastic as well as the bottles and attached the landscape fabric, I've just decided to take a piece of the clear plastic and just cover the landscape fabric so that it won't get any overspray on it. Typically the hardware is the last thing that gets added once you've completed your project, but because I've now decided to do this antique finish on the hope chest, um, and I've also already lined the inside of the hope chest with the plastic and the bottles, it's gonna be difficult to remove the hardware. So what I'm gonna try is um, some petroleum jelly, and I'm gonna rub it all over the um, hardware. And what it should do is that if I end up getting any paint on it, I can just rub it right off uh, of the hardware. So I'm gonna give that a shot and see how that works. Usually when you do this crackle antique finish, it's usually done where the base coat is not completely dry and then you do another paint layer on top of that and that causes it to crackle and look antique. Because the gray I sprayed on the hope chest is actually already completely dry, I'm gonna to have to do something a little different. What I'm gonna do is take a squirt bottle of water and spray down the hope chest with it. And then I'm gonna take the spray paint while the water was still on the hope chest and spray it on top of that and see if I can get the uh, crackle effect I'm looking for. What I'm going to use is this uh, Rust-Oleum Satin Heirloom White. It's almost like an antique white and I think that'll really go uh, well with the look I'm going for. Spraying it with the um, squirt bottle of water and then immediately spraying with the spray paint um, actually made this uh, crackle effect. And uh, this is what I was going for. I'm really liking this crackle. And uh, one of the things that was happening on this was that some of the water drips you was, I was seeing um, on this. So what I ended up doing was I took a uh, plastic um, shopping bag and I crumpled it up. And then I just um, dabbed some of the um, drips here and there. And then I ended up just by doing that, you could kind of see where um, it took some of the paint off in various areas. And when you look at it from far away, or even a little closer, you can see you've got a combination of the crackle and then this look where it looks like the paint kind of came off. So uh, I'm kind of liking this and um, I may do, the, I think I'm gonna do the rest on the uh, rest of the hope chest. So I've completed the crackle finish technique over the entire hope chest. I used one coat of the white spray paint and I also did the plastic bag technique so that you could see the undercoat of gray coming through just to give it more of a weathered look. And I am gonna either do um, the waterproof spray or um, a polyurethane over it just to further protect it from the weather and the elements. This is the completed hope chest. As you can see, I've added the soil and I'm going to be putting in seeds as well as some small plants and everything is going to be uh, all vegetables. I've also added a um, sign that I designed myself with a graphic art program that I have. And then I just um, had it printed up at the local print shop. I'm calling this my hopeful harvest because I wanted to kind of do a play on the word hope chest and uh, full harvest. So the sign on the hope chest was attached with Mod Podge. I put one coat under to attach it and then I put another coat over it. And I think I might end up doing um, the waterproof spray over that once everything dries just to protect it even further. Um, because it will be outside uh, all year round. 
I hope that this how-to video was helpful for you. Um, as I said in the beginning, this is my very first video. So um, there's a lot that I still need to learn. And if anybody has any comments or tips, um, I ended up using my cell phone to videotape this. So if you have any suggestions on um, an inexpensive uh, video camera, as well as uh, what editing software you might recommend, or uh, any other comments or tips that you have, or any questions that you have, uh, feel free to uh, let me know. And again, thank you for watching, and have a great day. I have three last minute tips for those of you that stayed till the end of the video and thank you for that. Um, on this crackle finish, uh, this does chip very easily and I would suggest putting a top coat over it to protect it. The second tip I have is regarding the technique I used with the petroleum jelly. I would suggest not using it because it made quite a mess and I ended up having to scrape paint off of the hardware. So that for me is a definite won't do that again. And the last tip that I have is if you decide to use the plastic bag technique, if the bag has any kind of print on it, um, do not um, use that part of the, of the bag against the uh, wet paint because the print will come off. So I hope these tips are helpful and uh, good luck.